The sun sends out light rays in every direction. Far away from the sun, this group of rays are nearly parallel to each other. Both sides of this glass lens have a spherical shape. As these parallel rays travel through the glass lens, they all meet at this point. This is said to be the focal point of the lens. This focal length is equal to half the radius of curvature of one side of the spherically shaped lens. This is said to be a converging lens or a convex lens and it is thick in the middle. We're going to use the lens to focus the image of this window onto a viewing screen. To measure the focal length of the lens, we focus the distant object onto this viewing screen. The distant object does not have to be infinitely far away. It's okay for the object to be further away than 20 times the focal length of the lens because that's close enough to being infinitely far away. Here, the window is serving as our distant object. A sphere of glass focuses light to a point. This cylinder is filled with water and it focuses light onto a line. What if we look through the lens at an object that's not infinitely far away? What will the lens do to the light then? To find out, we follow some rays of light that bounce off the object and then pass through the lens. We'll see that there are three different cases, depending on whether the object is nearer or farther than the focal length of the lens, and whether or not the lens is converging or diverging. This person is looking through the lens at this object. The focal point of the lens is here. The center line is said to be the optical axis of the lens. To locate the image, we follow a couple of rays that travel away from the object. When light from the sun hits the object, that light bounces into every direction there is. If we follow one ray of light that happens to travel parallel to the central axis, by definition, that ray passes through the focal point of the lens. This is said to be the parallel ray. A second ray that happens to leave the object and passes straight through the center of the lens, this ray will be undeflected by the lens. This is said to be the central ray. Where these two rays meet, that's where the image is located. We see that this image is upside down or inverted. It is reduced in size. And this is a real image because the rays pass through this point. We could place the viewing screen at this location and see the image on the screen. To get these two rays stuck in your head, right now you should draw three copies of this lens and then draw the pair of rays on each of those three copies. Between the lenses and mirrors, we're going to end up with six cases. So we want to practice drawing the rays a few times for each case. To calculate the location of the image, we use the thin lens equation. Measured from the center of the lens, this is the object distance O, and this is the image distance I, and this is the focal length F. This is the thin lens equation. 1 over f equals 1 over i plus 1 over o. Or if we solve it for 1 over i equals 1 over f minus 1 over o. Or the image itself, i, is equal to 1 over 1 over f minus 1 over o. For example, if the focal length of the lens is 10 centimeters and the object distance is 30, and the calculation gives i equal 15 centimeters for the image distance. Since i is greater than zero, we conclude that the image is real. The equation for the magnification is m equal minus i over o, which here is minus one half. Since m is less than zero, we conclude that the image is inverted. Since the absolute value of m is less than one, we conclude that the image is reduced in size, just as we had concluded from the ray diagram. 
the object had this height and the image has this height, the so-called lateral magnification is equal to the height of the image divided by the height of the object. We had calculated the magnification to be minus one half. That's also the ratio of image and object heights. If the object height is four centimeters, then we see the image height will be two centimeters. In case two of the converging lens, we place the object nearer to the lens than the focal length. A ray that travels parallel to the optical axis by definition passes through the focal point of the lens. The central ray passes undeflected through the center of the lens. Since these two rays are not meeting, we extend them backward. The image is located at the place where the two rays do cross. This is an upright, enlarged, virtual image. It's a virtual image because it's on the same side of the lens from which the light was coming. That is also the negative side of the lens. The positive side of the lens is the side to which light is going. The observer looks through the lens and sees a virtual image that appears to emanate from behind the glass, just as your own image appears to emanate from behind the everyday mirror. You should next draw three copies of this lens and practice drawing the pair of rays. The virtual image looks like this. The virtual image cannot be focused onto a screen. You cannot lay a piece of paper at the location of the virtual image and trace over it. The virtual image appears to emanate from behind the glass. For a numerical example, we take a focal length f equal 10 centimeters and place an object at a distance o equal 5 centimeters away from the lens. The thin lens equation gives i equal minus 6.7 centimeters for the location of the image. The magnification minus i over o is 1.7. Since the image distance i is negative, we conclude that the image is virtual. Since the magnification m is positive, we conclude that the image is upright, and since the absolute value of the magnification is greater than one, we conclude that the image is enlarged. A diverging lens is thin in the middle, and it always makes an upright virtual image. This is also said to be a concave lens. You can think of it as having a caved-in surface. Here is a diverging lens. The person is looking through the lens. Rays that travel along parallel to the central axis diverge away from the focal point on the other side of the lens. These diverging rays appear to emanate from this point behind the surface of the glass. You cannot move a ruler through the glass, so you cannot measure the focal length that way. The ray diagrams are the same, whether the object is within or beyond the focal length. A ray that travels parallel to the central axis diverges away from the focal point on the lighted side of the lens. This observer thinks that the ray is emanating from behind the glass. The central ray passes undeflected through the center of the lens. These two rays do not meet on the observer's side of the lens. The virtual image is located where the two rays cross behind the glass. You should next draw three copies of this lens to practice drawing the pair of rays that locate the image. Light from the object first strikes this side of the diverging lens. The radius of curvature of this side is on the negative side of the lens. For this reason, the diverging lens has negative values for its radius and for its focal length. For a numerical example, let's say that the diverging lens has a focal length of minus 5 centimeters and an object is placed 20 centimeters from the lens. The thin lens equation 
gives a value of minus 4 centimeters for the image distance. Since the image distance i is less than 0, we conclude that the image is virtual. The magnification is minus i over o, and here that will be 0 0.2. Since the magnification is positive, we know that the image is upright. Since the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, we know that the image is reduced in size, just as the ray diagram had shown. In a system of two lenses, the image from the first lens becomes the object for the second lens, taking into account the distance between the two lenses. This person is looking through two lenses at the object O1 that's placed 8 centimeters to the left of lens number 1, which is a concave or diverging lens having a focal length F1 equals minus 20 centimeters. Lens number 2 is a convex lens or a converging lens having focal length F2 equal plus 40 centimeters. The distance D between the two lenses is 15 centimeters. We're going to ask these questions and obtain these answers. To answer the first question, use the thin lens equation to find the image distance I1. We get minus 5.71 centimeters, which is to the left of lens number 1. The image from lens 1 is a virtual image. What is the magnification of the first lens? From the equation M1 equals minus I1 over O1, we get 0 0.71. This shows that the image from the first lens is virtual, reduced, and upright. Since the magnification M1 is positive and it has a magnitude of less than 1. What is the object distance for the second lens? We use the equation O2 equals D minus I1 and we get 20.7 centimeters. Again, this is to the left of lens number 2. What is the image distance for the second lens? We use the lens equation and get I2 equals minus 42.9 centimeters, which is to the left of lens number 2. And again, this is a virtual image. What is the magnification of the second lens? We use the equation M2 equals minus I2 over O2 and get 2.07. Since M2 is greater than 0, the second image I2 has the same orientation as the previous image, which was upright, so the second image is also upright. Since the absolute value of M2 is greater than 1, the image I2 is enlarged in size. What is the total magnification? We use the equation M total equals M1 times M2 and get 1.47. We already decided that the second image was virtual because I2 was less than 0. Since M total is greater than 0, the final image is upright. Since the absolute value of the total magnification is greater than 1, the final image is enlarged in size. Most any camera has about a dozen lenses. These are concave and convex shaped mirrors. A spherically shaped mirror has a radius of curvature r and its focal point is at half the radius. This person is looking toward the left at this converging or concave mirror. You might remember that it's concave because the surface seems caved inward. The mirror has a central or optical axis. As parallel rays arrive from the left and bounce off the mirror, each ray will next pass through the focal point of the mirror. The positive side of the mirror is the side from which light is coming. The negative side is behind the mirror where light cannot reach. The values for R and F are positive because the radius of curvature R lies on the positive side of the mirror.
The window will be reflected onto this screen by this concave mirror so that we can measure its focal length. The focal length is the distance between the mirror and the screen when the image of the window is focused. You cannot measure the focal length of the diverging mirror because it never focuses an image onto a screen. Instead, the image always appears to emanate from behind the glass. This person is looking toward the concave mirror. The object is beyond the focal point. A ray that moves toward the mirror parallel to the central axis bounces off the mirror and passes through the focal point. The central ray travels straight through the center of curvature of the mirror, bounces off the mirror, and then bounces straight back toward the object. If your eye was exactly in the center of the insides of this spherically shaped Christmas bulb, no matter which direction you looked, you would see your own eye reflected in the mirror. That's why the central ray travels from the object through the radius of curvature of the mirror, bounces off the mirror, passes back through the radius of curvature, and returns to the image where it started. The image is located where the two rays intersect. We see that this image is upside down, reduced in size, and real because the rays actually pass through this point. As a numerical example, suppose the focal length of the concave mirror is 10 centimeters and an object is placed beyond that, 30 centimeters away from the mirror. The thin lens equation gives an image distance of 15 centimeters. Since this is a positive number, we conclude that the image is real. The magnification m equals minus i over o, in this case is minus a half. And since this is a negative number, we conclude that the image is inverted. Since the absolute value of m is less than 1, we conclude that the image is reduced in size. We see that this image is real, inverted, and reduced, just as we found with the ray diagram. The next thing that you should do is to draw this mirror three times, and then draw in the pair of rays on each of those three copies. The second case occurs for the converging mirror when the object is within the focal point. The parallel ray starts at the object, travels to the mirror, and reflects through the focal point. The central ray leaves the object and travels through the center of curvature of the mirror. Since these two rays don't meet, we extend them backward to locate the image at their intersection behind the mirror. This is a virtual image which appears to emanate from behind the surface of the glass. This person sees an upright, enlarged, virtual image. If this person were to stand right against the glass, the radius of the glass would appear to be infinite, which makes a flat mirror, just as you're used to seeing your own image every day in the mirror. This helps us to remember that when we get near the mirror, the image is always virtual and upright. The next thing that you should do is to draw this mirror three times and then draw in the pair of rays on each of those three copies. As a numerical example, we take a focal length of 10 centimeters and an object distance of 5 centimeters. The thin lens equation gives an image distance of minus 6.7 centimeters. Since this is a negative number, we conclude that the image is virtual. The magnification, m equal minus r over o, will be 1.7. And since this is positive, we know that the image is upright. And the image is enlarged since the absolute value of the magnification is greater than 1. This is a diverging mirror which always produces an upright, virtual, and reduced image. 
The diverging or convex mirror has a negative radius of curvature because R lies on the negative, unlighted side of the mirror. There is only one case for the diverging mirror, no matter where the object is placed. When the parallel ray strikes the mirror, it bounces straight away from the focal point on the dark side of the mirror. The central ray goes from the object straight to R prime, the radius on the dark side of the mirror. The image is located where the two rays intersect behind the mirror. This is a virtual image. The next thing that you should do is to draw this mirror three times and then draw in the pair of rays on each of those three copies. As a numerical example, suppose that the focal length of the diverging mirror is minus 5 centimeters and the object is placed at 20 centimeters. The thin lens equation gives an image distance of minus 4 centimeters. Since that's a negative number, we know that the image is virtual. The magnification m equal minus i over o is 0 0.2 in this case. And that means that the image is upright and reduced in size, just as we had decided from the ray diagram. This machine turns one yellow bearing into many. The bearing has to be yellow for it to work. 